Uh, Huashin obviously focus, uh, Shine seems to have a few more siege tanks. Uh, Shine has got actually a lot more siege tanks there, so he's going to be able to hold this comfortably. Huashin has got forces coming in. Huashin might be able to actually distract Shine. He might be able to get Shine to defend on two fronts, and Shine doesn't seem to really have enough forces to do that. Huashin's also got the dropship, so he's now going to be able to come and seize that Minera. And really, Shine has been behind in this game ever since his initial starting build. And Huashin is now going to be able to use that dropship to spot over that cliff as well. And he's going to be able to shell that mineral line. Huashin is going to have a really tough def time defending it, and he is in fact shelling that mineral line. Shine is forced to bring his forces around towards the north to try and defend this and try and break Wash's forces. He's brought a lot of siege tanks down. This might give Washington a chance to come in from the north because Shine's force is now primarily positioned towards the south uh, and, and Shine now just trying to ward that dropship away. Uh, again, he's having to take the defensive position from his opponent and I think Washington might be ready to load that dropship in and get another drop off on that cliff uh, from the other direction. Shine has left a couple of siege tanks in to defend it. So Shine having enough in the tank in terms of his macro and really he, you've got to give him a lot of credit. <coughs> Excuse me. He's fought back well in this game. I felt that he was in an unwinnable position uh, initially after after that initial exchange but now Washington pumping out Washington. The, the, the key thing here is that Shine seems to be focusing solely on siege tanks and I think that's what's allowing him to stay in this game thus far. Washington getting both siege tanks and Goliaths. Shine relying on his raids to counter his opponent's dropships to keep his dropships at bay. But now Washington pushing forward. He seems to have a massive force here uh, on the ground. Shine actually has got more siege tanks but Washington again managed to war ward uh, Shine away, taking out the. La I think that was probably the last raid. I'm not sure if uh, Shine has done anything with that starport. I'm not sure if the starport just burnt down or if Shine was able to float it away and replant it somewhere. If he's built another starport, Shine has got four factories with machine shops. Uh, Huashin, on the other hand, has just got two factories. And really, I think you've got to give a little bit of an advantage to Shine in that respect. Uh, and Huashin, unfortunately, the planting of his factories is he's, he's going to lose some manufacturing time here. Now Shine is going to clear up those forces to the north of his uh, off expo. He's going to take uh, of uh, of the secondary. Well, it's not really the secondary, it's the secondary of the secondary, I suppose. The middle expansion at the 12 o'clock position, but Shine is now able to take those forces out to the north of that. And really, you've got to give Shine a decent positioning advantage here in terms of the fact that he's got so many sea shops on the ground. Huashin, unfortunately, the positioning of his factories was such that he had to float them away to put those machine shops down. And Shine, with almost a full control group of siege tanks, is starting to gain some position in this game. He's done really well in not allowing Huashin to take advantage of those dropships. I think the critical factor was that was that when Huashin went for that first drop in uh, Shine's base, he went for the killer punch uh, and it was a little bit of a risk. Shine was able to defend it successfully and both players now jogging for position in the middle and Huashin might find himself pincered here from both sides. Shine is going to be able to siege out but Huashin not committing himself to siege Bosch cleverly just pushing, continue to push on south with his tanks uh, and managed to take out some of Shine's forces but now he's lost all of his siege tanks because he was indeed trapped between two fronts and he's lost his entire ground force and Huashin is now in a world of trouble. He is definitely going to have to do some fighting here. He's got dropships out but he's got nothing to load in those dropships and Shine now just putting, pushing ahead and you've got to give Shine a lot of credit for having the guts to go solely with siege tanks. Uh, Shine now pushing ahead. Washington does have a couple of siege tanks in siege mode. He's not trying to get a third one but that siege tank is just barely going to get into siege before he gets taken out. Shine with still three siege tanks. He's not going to be able to set up siege. I think Washington would have been better off starting a slightly defensive line because he did have the dropships. I think he would have been better off conserving, conserving his siege tanks. Now he's forced to bring the SCVs out and Shine meanwhile is going to get a chance to macro up uh, and try and get himself in a stronger position in this game. And I really have to say, Shine's play has been really impressive in this game so far, despite his uh, starting strategy giving him a slight disadvantage. He's managed to now maneuver those siege tanks within shelling range of that expo, but sh but he doesn't have any dropships really or any air support, uh, and really that is what is keeping Washington in this game, the fact that he can't. And Shine now with three more siege tanks coming in just in time to reinforce, he's going to actually be able to take this position, take this offensive position, Washington with another couple of siege tanks, uh, forced to really continue to pull out those SCVs. Meanwhile, Shine looks like he's... Washington looks like... Uh, both players look like they've set up... Uh, uh, further expansions, uh, Huashin at the, uh, I would say, 6 630 position and, and Shine at the natural expo off that base, but uh, Shine has now managed to set up siege outside of Washington base and really he's just going all out siege tanks and despite the fact that his opponent has the dropships and the maneuverability advantage, he, he's really just going all out. Now Huashin finally using his dropships to some sort of advantage, setting his siege tanks up on the cliff, Huashin getting the scan off, he's probably going to be able to pick those siege tanks off before they can do anything and those siege tanks die. So Huashin still with four siege tanks within range of, uh, sorry, Shine was still with four siege tanks and now the refinery goes down for Huashin, still within range of that off expo, just north of the six o'clock position and Huashin uh, is in huge trouble here. Now he's going to be able to drop uh, and again obviously using the, that dropship to maximum advantage, dropping uh, SCVs right on top of those siege tanks, forcing Huashin, forcing Shine to unsiege 
at least three of his siege tanks, but Shine quickly managed to re siege them because he gets more siege tanks coming in. And just constant stream of siege tanks pouring down from Shine, and Huashin is struggling to say, I have to say, this is completely blindsided me. I really expected Shine to take this game, uh, Huashin to take this game comfortably after that initial Wraith Rush had failed. And really, you've got to give a lot of credit for Shine to turning this around. This really has been an epic comeback, and I, I, I'm not a huge personal fan of Terran versus Terran, but this has been an exciting and great game of Starcraft between these two players. Really impressive, especially by Shine. I'm going to have to reevaluate my opinion of him. I didn't think much of him before this, but um, he's shown why he's been so dominant in the Pro League this season for OG and why he's helped them to such success. And looks like we are going to have the scores leveled at 1-1 between these two teams going into the first 2v2 matchup. Huashin has again managed to get a couple of siege tanks up on that ridge. Meanwhile, uh, I think Shine probably has got uh, the advantage. He's definitely got the positioning advantage and his economy seems to be flourishing as well. He's got... Uh, He's, again, continuing to just pump those siege tanks out at a massive rate. And the, the key here is that Huashin has not been able to mine from that base for such a long period of time, or from that refinery. Again, the siege tanks on the hill being taken out. And Huashin not really able to translate that dropship advantage. He, I, I guess maybe he was a little bit too aggressive. Maybe it was. Maybe he, he should have been a little bit more circumspect instead of trying to put the pressure on his opponent. Shine really... Uh, Brilliant by him, putting down machine shops in all four of his factories and just pumping Goliaths en masse and relying on his raids to keep the dropships at bay. And he managed to do that. You've got to give him a lot of credit, despite the fact that his opponent had Goliaths. He managed to keep those dropships at bay and really play a great game of StarCraft. Question once again, trying to break out of this gridlock that his opponent set up for him, using again those dropships to maximum advantage. Manages to take the siege tanks out this time. And looks like Quashin isn't completely out of it yet. The key for him is that that expansion that he's got at the... Uh, I would say 6.30 position has kept him in the game thus far uh, because he is mining from there. Now that expansion has been discovered, so Washington sending a dropship of units over to just to, to get his defense up and running in that expansion. Washington now has got um, four factories with machine shops and another couple of factories without machine shops. Uh, but he, he's now managed to break free off that uh, stranglehold a little bit that his opponent had set up, uh, but really the pressure continued to put out and Washington has now got to visit. Meanwhile, Shine has managed to get a dropship out as well. Uh, I would have to say that Shine with the advantage, he's got the positional advantage and the key is that for such a long period of time, Washington wasn't able to get any resources at all mined at that expansion, just north of the 6 o'clock base. Um, and critically, the refinery also went down, so he would have fallen behind a little bit in gas as well. I haven't had a look at Shine's base in a while. It'll be interesting to see how he is macro-wise in terms of his factories, uh, but really both players uh, macroing heavily in this game. This has been a very heavy macro matchup, and now uh, Huashin with a slight advantage here because he's taken the main at the 630 expansion, so he's got, at the 630 base, so he's got the main on that base, so he has the height advantage, but he's lost his siege tanks, and now Shine with a massive group, and Shine also intercepting the dropships for Huashin. This is going to be the killer blow right here. Huashin is going to lose all of his dropships. I think one of the dropships just about survives, uh, but that's not going to have too many units in, and that dropship's still coming under fire from Goliath, and I'm sure uh, Shine might be waiting to intercept it, so he's going to be able to drop, but Shine is now going to be able to barrel through. Shine with a massive force barreling through, and that was really genius by Shine. He sent his ground force down and left a couple of Goliaths to intercept the direction from which the dropships for Huashin would be arriving, and this is going to kill this expansion, and that's going to put Shine out of this game finally, uh, or put Huashin out of this game finally. Shine now building a command center. Uh, before he's even killed the command center of his opponent, and really there's no hope for Shine now in this, uh, for Huashin now in this game. Shine comfortably taking the victory here, finally. Great play by Shine, I have to say, we've seen some great moves in this. First of all, his defense at the beginning of the game, when he stopped Huashin from getting that drop in, uh, and, and really establishing himself in, in Shine's base, I, I think that was a very risky maneuver by Huashin, and that's probably what has ended up costing him the game in the end, because that one dropship, when he could have had two in that, in that beginning of point of the game and had more mobility for his forces, could have been crucial if he just waited a few seconds more, but obviously he wanted to catch his opponent off guard uh, before his opponent would realize that he would have the advantage of the dropships. Uh, but really, since then, Shine has played some great Starcraft with Siege Tanks alone, it has to be said, he didn't build Goliaths for a very long time, and then a really pimp play, really innovative, uh, well, not necessarily innovative, but great anticipation, sending his forces down towards that base, anticipating that his opponent would have to bring reinforcements in through the aerial route, putting his Goliaths in place, uh, and, and just delivering the knockout punch to Huashin. And really, unfortunately, Huashin obviously had no choice but to go for that. Huashin trying to float that command center up, trying to get another expansion going somewhere, but really he's completely starved of, it, of resources at this point in time, while his opponent is swarmed all over the map. And it, it is no man's land for Huashin, has been for a little while now. So GG to shine. Great Starcraft by him, I'm very impressed, uh, and Huashin goes down. So it's going to be 1-1, Shine pulling it back for OGN versus STX, and we're going to be going up into the third game, the first 2v2 of this, all square. Um, great game of Starcraft, Science Vessel with covert offs, Shine just not toying, toying with Huashin, there's really no need for this. Um, Huashin should really GG, and I guess if he doesn't, he deserves the nuke he's going to get, um, by means of embarrassment. 
So uh, it's just a matter of now for Shine to close out this game versus Washin. Um, I have to say I'm very impressed by his Terran versus Terran in this matchup. Considering I wouldn't have been as impressed if the strategies had been reversed, if Huashin had had made a uh, had made a mistake in terms of his starting strategy choice and lost out because of it. And I suppose uh, I suppose it's not really fair to say because those raids did keep him in the game and those raids did do the function that I suppose they were primarily intended for, which was to hold off his opponent's dropships. But really, Huashin had should have had the economy advantage. All he needed to do was macro up. He decided to go for the kill too soon and he lost the game because of it. And now Shah using the dropships quite cleverly, dropping right on top of those siege tanks uh, and is going to be able to take them out with the Goliaths, um, just breaking the last remnants of Quash's defense. Um, stellar, stellar Terran versus Terran, this is top class Starcraft. Um, I'm very impressed. Another siege tank goes down and Quash finally GG's. GG guys, this is Lazar, thanks for listening.